Hey everyone, today we're doing something a bit different. We're doing a mouse teardown slash kind of review. The thing is, Logitech sent us their power play magnetic resonance charging mice, and we already reviewed this one. This is the G900 body, now named G903, because it's a little bit different. It supports the power play wireless charging surface that Logitech introduced. But as far as the actual mouse, the ergonomics, the buttons, the responsiveness, all of that, the wireless, it's all the same in terms of our feelings of it as the original review. And the original review was very positive of the G900. So if you're curious about the mouse specifically, the 903 or the 900, that content's already on the channel. You can check that review. So today we're doing a teardown. We're gonna take apart the 903 and hopefully some of this power play charging mat, which allows for the wireless charging through the surface of the mat transferred into the mouse. So that's what we're looking at. I'll talk a bit about how it works and battery life and things like that as we go through it. Before that, this coverage is brought to you by the Core G21 enclosure from Thermaltake, a $70 case with two four millimeter thick tempered glass side panels and a power supply shroud with top mounted SSD sleds. Learn more at the link in the description below. So for the basics on what this is doing, we've got an oscillating EM field. It charges one coil and then that induces current in other coils. So that would be the one between the mouse and the charging station or the power play mat. That's how it's charging. It uses magnetic resonance. So there's a magnetic field from the primary coil and that radiates equally in all directions. So that primary coil is going to be in the mat as we understand it. Radiating in all directions means that it'll be the strongest at the center of wherever that coil is charging, which is the center of the mat. And then you lose some of the power and efficiency out towards the edges. But Logitech has built this in a way that it's not larger than a negative charging effect unless maybe you were to try and make it negatively charge at the very edge. And as a note, DigiKey has a great chart of the Qi chargers, which are used for phones and resonance efficiency. So we'll put that up and you can check their article out on DigiKey's website. That shows the resonance and its efficiency. So resonant, its downside is that it's a lot less efficient and that's because of flux leakage. Efficiency is roughly 30% at two centimeters in an optimal system. And this mouse is going to be a lot closer than two centimeters, but it basically becomes useless once you start lifting off. But realistically, you're not lifting off more than it's using in normal use anyway. So what Logitech trades in efficiency they make up for in convenience, you've ultimately got a mouse charger in the mouse pad. Makes a lot of sense. Corsair is trying to do one of these pretty soon as well. Uh, they were showing a prototype at Computex. But the, the core idea here, basically, the mouse pad is an extra hundred bucks. So you pay a hundred dollars for this and then you can throw a mouse pad on top of it. They provided these. Uh, as long as it's not too thick and it's not metal, it'll work. Uh, in terms of charging, keeping the mouse centered is going to be best. Technically, it still charges toward the outer edges, but it's faster in the middle. We don't know exactly how much faster. We don't have those, those numbers from Logitech. And uh, charging duration, so using the mouse in testing, if you're just using the mouse on the mouse pad, it basically doesn't discharge and doesn't charge as far as you're concerned. Obviously, the battery is still being used and it's still being charged. It's just basically at equal rates. So that's good. Uh, it also tends to stick between 80 and 95% by design for battery charge when, uh, when you're not using the mouse. That's what it'll go to. And that's just because as you burn through more charge cycles on a battery that are more abusive, the battery dies faster. So from that standpoint, it makes sense to try and target 80 to 95% rather than push really hard for the last couple percent and heat up the battery and limit its life, which is a problem with phones as well. Android phones now have uh, different smart charging solutions that tend to slow them down for the amount of charge that goes through towards the upper limit. So uh, we're going to start with the mat because I think that's the most interesting. The mouse itself will tear down as well, but those are all pretty much the same once you get inside. So let's start with the mat. I think the thing here, First of all, maybe we can show this. You can actually see the, uh, the whatever, I guess that's probably cabling underneath or copper wire or something like that. I'm not, I'm not an expert on inductive or magnetic resonance chargers, so I don't know what they consist of other than coils. But you can see the outline here. So being, again, not an expert in this type of thing, my guess, based on just kind of looking at this, is that this is going to be the optimal charging zone because you can see the rectangular outline and then the smaller one. That's dead center of that thing. So that's what I'm guessing is best for charging performance. 
Now, speaking with Logitech, as you get to the edges of the pad, it will charge less efficiently, and that does coincide with what we do know of this type of charging. This isn't a new design, by the way. Magnetic resonance charging has been alive around since Nikola Tesla was alive, so it's, it's pretty old. But uh, if you sit the mouse out here towards the edges, you might be able to make it lose charge. If you start like using it right here with max DPI with a one inch movement, you could probably make it discharge faster than it charges, uh, but that's not a real use case. So I think we were kind of playing around with this earlier, trying to figure out how to, if we needed to slice it open or if we could just peel it or what. Basically, this is the module for the power play charging. So it's got USB in here. That needs to be plugged into your computer. That powers both the charging circuit, which just runs on USB 2.0 spec power, uh, voltage and current and all that, same spec as USB 2. And then it's also the wireless transmitter. So your mouse speaks with this hub directly. Uh, and then that just goes down the cable into your computer for the actual input. And playing around earlier, it looks like this will just kind of peel. And uh, haven't actually taken it apart yet, but we did start peeling it. There's a little plate in there, uh, like an acrylic or polycarbonate or something. So let's just, let's peel this the rest of the way off. Uh, Logitech, I'm sorry, but you know that this is what we do. So we could get some help from one of these. Just a bunch of adhesive holding it on. Some additional side notes on this. If you want to use it on a metal table or a metal surface, you'll want a thick layer of something underneath it, maybe another a large mouse pad or something like that. It won't work on those surfaces just because of how the charging circuit works. Charging the mouse by cable is still possible, just like normally. It takes a couple hours, just like normally, maybe maybe two hours or so. And charging by the mat, if you were to leave the mouse just like this, uh, it, it, I think, I don't remember exactly, I think it was something like 12 hours, 14 hours, a little less efficient. If you were to use the mouse and let it charge, it probably just in normal use takes about four days to go from zero to relatively full, and that's during use. So certainly not a fast charging solution but it's not supposed to be. It's just supposed to be a, a sustaining solution to keep the mouse alive while you use it so that you never have to actively go plug it in to charge it, uh, which they were successful in. It actually does work in that way. It works pretty well. A bit expensive. It's a bit of a premium right now for this stuff because it's new and you gotta charge to cover R&D for new product. But hopefully this will trickle outward to uh, other companies or other products later on. Also, this mouse pad or the power play mat will work with anything that has, does this one have it right now? So here's a magnet. That's not the charging piece. This is the charging piece. So these are basically universal. You can take one of these uh, from Logitech. It's not going to work in every mouse. The mouse needs to have the capability to, to work wirelessly and with the mat. But in the future, if you buy a Logitech mouse with this form factor and one of these in it, let's say a mouse that's not out yet, maybe the G1003. If you buy one of those, it'll work with this mat as well. So theoretically, the mat's a, a one-time purchase. But, like any company, of course, Logitech could change things and maybe they decide they want to upgrade it, at which point, who knows, maybe it'll lose that compatibility. But for now, that's just how it works. The plate that's in here might just be for rigidity, I'm thinking. So here's, you can see, there's your top rubber layer, which is covered again uh, by one of these. And it's, I mean, it's really, it's, it's real like rubber. You're not, gonna, you're not gonna move stuff around on it. So that sits on there. And then underneath it, we've got what I'm calling acrylic. I don't think that's actually what it is, but some kind of, clear plastic polycarbonate type acrylic whatever material in here uh, and then the under rubber which just holds it in place oh, okay 
got it. Let's get the top off. And technically, I have to send this one back to Logitech. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if they'll have any use for it. Like I said, uh, Logitech, sorry. I would have done this with the retail sample anyway. But this is some unique content other people haven't done yet. And uh, maybe we can learn something, maybe we won't. I have no idea. We'll find out. If we don't, then oops. If we do, then awesome. There's your outline, just all a bunch of adhesive. This is basically garbage now, so we'll move that to the side. Uh, is there anything on the bottom? No. Okay, rip, rip headphone users, also rip power play mat. There's a power cable. Um, it's just glued on there, huh? Yes, that's just glued on there. All I want to know is what's this outline. I'm guessing it's just like a copper cable, like a trace almost. Like I said, I, I don't know anything about this type of circuit. So um, this thing right here, that's there's your outline. Where's our Where did the power plug in? Up here. So... Where is that exactly? That's right here. So how does, is it like connected right there and then going, okay, this doesn't need to be there. That's pretty cool. I don't know, so this is what I don't know. Like when I read coil and I'm reading about these things, is it like an inductor coil, uh, like a choke where you've got just a coil of a, a copper actual coil, which would maybe be in the power play module or is it a coil like, does this constitute a coil? Maybe someone in the comments can tell us if you've got an EE background or something like that. Uh, I think this is just copper wire, but uh, I don't actually know. So anyway, eventually we come in over here and create this circuit. And I don't think we're really gonna realistically be able to get through this without just using like scissors or something. Cause um, and that black, adhesive is crazy strong. I don't think it'll really teach us anything anyway. Like, is there any text under there? Just in tech. If you want to look into this thing more, I don't know if this helps you at all, but we've got a part number for the PCB right there, 3PCR01865A. It's probably a custom PCB. I don't know that you'll find anything out there. There's the rest of it. This is revision 0 0.72, so. Uh, this is, I should note, this is actually all is a prototype, so that's probably, this number might iterate to 1.0 for the retail product. But either way, that's what that looks like for now. I'm not going to try and dig more into it at the moment. Um, let's look at, should we try and get into this thing? I don't know. If we were live streaming, I'd ask chat. Uh, actually, and I know what chat would say. Chat would say yes. Mm. Okay, let's just, let's peel this back and make a judgment call. If there's nothing really under there, oh, there's screws. Okay, you know what, that's gonna be easy. Let's just do that. There's your power cable, what's left of it anyway, the ribbon cable. Nothing special in here, that's just the shell. And here's your USB arm. There you go, I know that name. STM32L1 series. This is from ST.com, official source. The latest addition to ST's L1 series, the, the one we're looking at, is the, quote, perfect fit for applications that require a minimum processing power and ultra low power consumption at a budget price. Where is there? There's your LED output. You can see the diffuser plate. This is kind of cool. Uh, they've got the diffuser here, a little cover plate for it. So your diffuser plate, cover, and I think I got, got on backwards, but you get the idea. And then that shines through to the Logitech logo. And where does this hover over? So this connects like that. And then this part came out backwards, didn't it? This goes like that, I think. Yes, that goes there. And then this covers. Okay, so there's your LED panel, I think. Digital, digital RGB LEDs. There's a controller that's probably capable of controlling it. 
and whatever else this thing does, which is basically charging, and a wireless uh, reception. But I'm not sure if that actually if that piece controls it or if it's one of these other ones. All right, let's look at uh, let's look at the mouse. Which one? G903 or G703? I don't want to do both. Uh, 903 is more expensive. This, uh, this one's 150, I think, MSRP, which is what the G900 originally was. The G900 is now $100. So if you liked that mouse when we reviewed it but didn't want to pay 150, it's a good price now. Uh, I, I'm still personally using the G900, by the way. I like that mouse a lot. And this is that mouse. That's that's a little more. This is a G403. You actually, I mean, you can see it in the body. So this is just the G403, except for uh, the charging station. I, this one's going to be a much more of a pain to take apart, and we're probably not going to get back together very easily, if at all. Taking mice apart, definitely inadvisable, if only because these Teflon feet, you're never going to get them back on the way they came off. It's not going to be a satisfying fine user experience. Uh, you can buy replacements, though, and you could also do a better job than I'm doing here to like preserve them if you wanted to. Um, I mean, obviously, you basically just stick it onto, like you try and pull the whole thing off, and like I just split it in half, and then stick it onto a surface and just reapply it as soon as you can, and it'll be fine. I've, I've done it before on mice that I actually used. Okay, so I need to actually use one of these things. For Goes back here. That one's salvageable. Yes, they are captive screws. Cool. Okay. So we only had to destroy every sticker and poly or uh, what is it, Teflon foot on the underside, but we did get in there. So it looks like, is this a battery? There's your battery, lithium polymer. Those are kind of more like gel packets as opposed to lithium ion. Let's disconnect that. All right, cool. So battery is disconnected. Lithium polymer battery. For those curious, if you ever want to use or service this thing, so this is where the teardowns become kind of useful uh, as opposed to just being cool. Uh, if you ever want to use or service this, it's really not that hard to get into. Now that you've seen me go through it, you know where the hidden screws are, so you won't have to destroy as much stuff. These can definitely be placed back on there. I mean, some of them... Like this one, I did a, I was more careful with, and you could put the, that back on there, and it would be basically good as new. I mean, that's really not bad. So uh, you could do a better job than I did here and still have a functional mouse afterwards. And we'll have a functional mouse, just that it'll suck these on a surface. But uh, if you have to get in here to replace the battery because your battery is, maybe you've used it for four or five years now at this point, and you don't want to buy another one, you'd rather buy a battery. If you can find it, the part number, Shenzhen. So they're in China, Shenzhen. Uh, YU10298-15004. And uh, we've got a couple other numbers on here as well, but let's just, get a, let's just get a shot of the battery. And then if anyone wants those other numbers, you can just freeze frame it and use those so that you can Replace it if you're able to find a replacement that is the same size. Actually, we should measure the size too. All right, so if you can't find this exact one and you're wondering, I wonder if another one exists out there that's the same size uh, because it is, the size does actually impact whether you can use it or not on this. So roughly 50 by 35. Give yourself a millimeter to breathe. And then this is the more interesting bit. Another ARM STM32L100, so Logitech's able to save some money by ordering a ton of those and using them in everything. So same one, I think, that we saw in the power play mat. And uh, we've got some power hooked up to a metal plate, which is, where does that sit? On here, is that part of the coil or is that part of the, that looks like it's maybe part of the coil. So this thing right here, which connects to the power play module, which every time I hear power play sounds like 
poker gambling or something. That connects through here. Metal to metal over here. And uh, this is hooked up to what looks like a, a ground or common. And then there's your power line, which I don't know if that's five volts maybe. Um, there's your what looks like a five volt and a common or a ground. And uh, uh, that's going into, well, what else do we have? Ribbon cable goes into the top portion. So the ribbon cable is connecting up here, which I think is sending your data back and forth. The mouse of these mice, uh, the, the scroll wheels on these Logitech mice are pretty cool. They've got this switch right here that depresses. You push that button, which it's obviously already pushed right now. There you go. So push it. And it will, I think, apply force to this thing right here. Yes. That mechanism. So this mechanism is pretty sweet. Uh, you push this button and it engages. So right now we've got the uh, very tactile response and it, it stops. I mean, it does one tick at a time. If you can see down here through the camera, there's a ton of spokes in there. So it's got a lot of points of engagement. It engages on each one of the spokes. So those spokes are, you get PoE on that, and then each one engages. And then if we do this, as many of you probably know from Logitech Mice, it does the hyper scroll, <clears throat> which I actually use this a lot for scrolling through spreadsheets. You just kind of hit the button to toggle between them and then that gets you to the bottom of the page real quick. So pretty cool stuff. But that's uh, that's r loosely how that works. As far as what the switch in is engaging, this piece of this black plastic here underneath the clear plastic moves. It's like a shoe. So if I push that, you see it move. So right now we're engaged. We're engaging the brake. And let's release it. There's your hyper scroll. I'm not gonna click it down this time, just push part way. And what's happening is over here on this side, you can see a metal bar and that bar goes across and is what's engaging the, I mean, it's, it's basically like throwing a stick into, into the spokes of a bike. Uh, is that what's, that is what's engaging us, right? Yeah, that's pretty cool. So here's the, see the, this is the plastic shoe I was pointing out. So when I push that button, is this engaged? Yes. When I push the button, the shoe is releasing tension from the metal bar, which brings the metal bar backwards. And when the metal bar goes that direction, it's dragging against the scroll wheel on the inside right there. Pretty cool. I'm not gonna take the rest of this apart. I really, it's just, we've done it before. It's a lot of work. It never goes back together and you don't really learn anything special other than what we've already done without more of an engineering background in this kind of thing. So, uh, so there's your scroll wheel. The other buttons were contained here. So switches for these buttons are on these PCBs. Uh, there's going to be one per set of switches. They are on on switches like normally. Uh, Logitech technically doesn't, doesn't tell us that information because they could always change suppliers. They don't want to be locked in but they would choose one with the same spec. So 50 million clicks or whatever it is these days, uh, 20 to 50 million, depending on what you're looking at for the mouse. But yeah, I think that's it. So let's, uh, let's leave it at that for this one. Pretty cool. It, it, you know, it's getting fun to do these. Like the point is, like I said, sometimes it's just cool. It's just cool to see what's underneath. Uh, sometimes you learn something, the battery replacement information might be useful for someone. But ultimately, it's just, you know, I was curious how that hyperscroll system worked. Uh, I've looked in the past. I don't remember figuring it out last time because I think I might have stopped last time I took apart a Logitech mouse because I didn't want to completely destroy it because I was actually using it. Um, so this one's a sacrificial lamb. But, yeah, pretty cool to see how it just, just entirely mechanical little break that shoots into a spoke. Um, so I think that's it for this one. You can subscribe for more. We do teardowns like this on stuff fairly regularly. Video cards are the main one where we look at the VRMs and talk about how the VRM design works, things like that. Subscribe for that. Otherwise, patreon.com slash gamers nexus helps out directly. And uh, as always, articles and things like that on gamersnexus.net, shirts, gamersnexus.squarespace.com, and Logitech. I'll get this back together. Uh, 
I'll let you guys handle the the feet and uh, as far as the power play pad, sorry. Um, but hey, it was cool. So thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.